Hello again, and welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis, and we continue to stream stories of entrepreneurship, leadership, and how people are dealing with this ever-changing economy. And, you know, we've had thousands of interviews, over 7,000 interviews since being at Radio Entrepreneurs. We've reached all over the planet and talked about new technologies. And I'm excited to say this knocks off both of those things. We're going to be speaking with Simon Glass over in London today about uh Quodio, I hope I pronounced it correctly. Welcome, Simon. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to be with you. Yes, thank you. You know, I read about Quodio and I found it quite interesting. So uh, why don't you tell our listeners about it? Thanks. So, uh, yeah, basically we created almost like a sort of dating app, but for money, although some people say dating is for money. But uh, so we uh, start off originally with a database of venture capital firms and private equity firms, the people who back entrepreneurial businesses. And it turned out that most entrepreneurs didn't want to just see data and try and sift through and work out who to go and speak to. They wanted to be uh, effectively create, have some shortness effectively created for them. So they knew who to go and start their sort of fundraising journey with. It's so like with dating, you just know who you need to speak to when. Very similar when you're trying to raise money to know who to go and speak to when and not talk to the wrong people, what we call kissing frogs. So we decided to use the original database we built and then created algorithms that can sort of do the matching to entrepreneurs can find the right VCs to go and speak to, and VCs can also find the right entrepreneurs to speak to. Interesting. And how did all of this evolve? I mean, it just didn't happen. What's your background and what were you seeing at the time? So thanks. So this came from, I suppose, uh, business experience of various sorts. So I'd worked in venture capital, deploying funds and raising funds for them. I'd worked as an entrepreneur. I'd worked in advisory and banking. And in all those, and actually as a business school at one stage and actually worked for the FT and things like that. And in all those different stages, saw there were problems in entrepreneurs and venture capitalists navigating through the sort of mass of data. Uh, so VCs are often very smart people, but they aren't usually from networking backgrounds. They have quite narrow networks they tend to get their opportunities from. So that means they miss out on on great deals in the FOMO concern, but they miss out on great deals and they miss out on often entrepreneurs of diverse or regional backgrounds who they're not known to them. And entrepreneurs, on the other hand, don't know where to start. So we, from our original base of running a sort of free-to-air database of venture capital, found that people were trying to use it to try and identify who to be funded by and didn't know where to start. And so if we could give them the tools to give us a bit of information about their businesses, we'd try and put them on the, on the right track initially. Interesting. You know, uh, during this uh, time, uh, worldwide pandemic, a lot of people were home working from home. Uh, how does this, get, you know, I would assume this gets utilized more easily uh, for entrepreneurs who are looking for funding than in, let's say, three, four years ago. Yeah, I, I think it's changed a bit. I think it's just the size of entrepreneurship's changed. I mean, our, our research shows there are about 582 million entrepreneurs seeking some kind of funding globally. That's through some research with Cambridge and with INSEAD originally, uh, the business schools, um, look at market sizes. So there are huge numbers of entrepreneurs out there now looking for some kind of equity funding. Um, and that's exploded and it's growing very rapidly. And I think we continue to grow. I and mean, even in recessionary times, what do people do when they lose their job? They go and off and start their own business. Um, obviously, not all businesses will ever raise money, not all business of this sort, not all businesses will go down this path. But even if you can put people in the right direction to know it isn't for them as much as it is for them, that's a kind of useful thing to do. So entrepreneurship has definitely grown. And the venture capital side, the supply of money has also grown enormously in the last few years. And that's sort of both meant that there are more businesses can get funded, uh, but also meant that uh, more people get attracted to it because they can see there's a bit of a money pot there. So the whole the whole industry has grown. So, um, and then against the background of the pandemic, initially, uh, I just told something now actually, uh, at an accounting firm in London that does a work with entrepreneurs, and they were saying, you know, how initially funding sort of fell off a cliff at the beginning of the pandemic when everybody sort of panicked. It's a bit like probably now the moment people are panicking a bit at the moment, and then they got got back to normal. They got back to business normal, except business was done much more online. Um, and now I think what we're seeing is a bit of a hybrid. So this accounting firm is just saying to me now they're going back to sort of their their um, managing partners want people to come back into their offices and come back into in-person events. I think people are tiring of Zoom a bit. So there's a kind of bit of a hybrid economy, I think, now now emerging. Interesting. Uh, I'm interested in your financing model and also how you find, how you fill your database, let's say, with, visa, with, with funding sources and how everything sort of works and how you make your money. So could you go into some of the bits and bytes with me? Sure, thanks. So we collect our data, we've got our magic sources, S O 
you are <laughs> CES, source of business sources that you eat, um, our magic source of four, fourfold. The most interesting bit is that we work with about 30 business schools around the world where we get their MBA students to go out and interview the venture capitalists in their offices. And that was all done in person, their offices prior to the pandemic, again, going more hybrid now. Uh, during the pandemic, we did stuff um, online again through Zoom. We find that by having face-to-face -face interviews, you gain a lot of insights, and we're very interested in some of the qualitative information, the, the how and why the business is done, as opposed to just historic reported data that people tend to tend to try and spray around a bit. So we want to get underneath the, underneath the hood a bit. So um, we've done about a thousand of those interviews globally, and actually in Boston, uh, BU is a great partner. Uh, we've worked with BU a couple of times. A great professor Greg Stoller and his team over there, and um, just did some research in the Boston area recently. So we're very active in Boston. Uh, partly through our relationship with Boston University. We work with these business schools around the world, though. Um, so we've had projects happen in Tokyo and Milan and Malta. I'm in Malta next week in London, uh, where I'm at the moment, um, Washington, D.C., various other locations. What's most interesting to us in those locations, though, is often to go out to markets that aren't so obvious. So everybody goes to New York and to San Francisco. But in fact, there's huge amounts of entrepreneurship and huge amounts of venture capital activity um, and private equity activity for mid-market businesses not just the tech businesses, but the, the sort of family succession changes going on businesses and, and growth in existing businesses uh, outside uh, the obvious centers. And people tend to overlook that. So a lot of our mission is about getting to those diverse entrepreneurs out there. So um, so those business school projects enable us to do that. So that's one of our sources of data. And then we blend that data in our database together with information from public sources, from our own subscribers, and we have what's called APIs, which is, you know, data feeds that come in from various sources as well. And we blend it all together and curate that data. And that goes through the algorithms, then then serve the matches to people. Um, so that's how the sort of between proprietary algorithms and the way we collect our data, which is quite unusual, create those that matching technique and that matching process. Um, the model itself is very different. So historically in the industry, the venture capital industry, people provide very technical, very complicated solutions or data rather than solutions that are pushed out to whoever the user might be at very high price points of thousands of dollars. So you have to know what you're doing and most entrepreneurs wouldn't know where to start or want to spend that kind of money. So we looked and thought, if you're gonna try and democratize venture and access to capital, which is our sort of mantra effectively, our, our mission, um, you can't do that in high price points and with a overly complicated system. So we're constantly working to make the system as applicable as possible. We've just updated our website. So it's a bit more fun, a bit more sort of humor uh, in, in terms of how it works, explaining more what's in the tin uh, on quadio.com, which is the website. Um, but we create a, a, a what's called a freemium product. So for entrepreneurs, there's some, some functionality for free. And then it's either ten dollars or twenty dollars a month. There's some annual programs and discount programs around with various folks. So it's very low pricing on a sort of what's called a SaaS model, like a, a subscription type model, which people are used to doing with all kinds of services these days. We, so we don't take commissions. We're not regulated to do that, and that's a whole other game. Um, people often ask about that kind of stuff. So it's very simple. And people often tell us incredibly good value for the price. We say, well, great, tell your friends, get on, on the system. We're about getting as many people as possible onto the platform to access this kind of funding. And that's necessary to have a, a low price point and accessible product to be able to do that. Now, I, it's uh, all very interesting. Uh, Simon, what's your background? Have you been an entrepreneur before? I'm an entrepreneur running Quadio. <laughs> and in fact, I used to be an entrepreneur in the 90s running an entertainment and arts media business. Uh, in fact, one of my former employees, my colleagues, has come here from Germany to come and stay for a couple of days in London at my apartment in London. Um, so uh, I used to do that, sort of running around the US and other places, getting people to to uh, book gigs of, of various sorts back in the 90s. And I used to run charity rock concerts before that. So that was something I helped to co-start at a university. But I've worked in banking. I've worked. I've written for the Financial Times uh, as a freelance. I've uh, taught business at business schools. I've worked in venture capital. I worked for two venture capital firms UK. So I've had a pretty broad background. I've worked across multiple geographies. I've worked in Asia Pacific, worked out in the UK, and now Quadio itself is based in the US. So I'm I'm now based in the US. So, and I've spent quite a lot of my, my life in the US over the years. So I'm very comfortable going back and forth and we're able to go back and forth now. So um, quite a global background and quite a broad background, but very much always about creating new markets. Um, so creating businesses that you know, didn't exist before or looking at markets in different kind of ways, whether it be in banking where I did sort of different kind of structures for various deals or whether it be in um, entrepreneurship now. 
Wow, very interesting. Uh, and you say you were in the entertainment industry. Sorry, I was ducking there to pick That's up right. something. I was okay. ducking to pick up my book. <laughs> so uh, if someone's looking for you and the company, how would they find you? So the easiest is to go to quodio.com, which is like rodeo, 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 they often say in the West Coast of the US, but like rodeo, but with a Q instead. So Q-O-D-E-O.com, that's the website. And we're obviously on LinkedIn and other sort of social media, et cetera, to follow um, you know, for things like events we do from time to time, et cetera. But, but quodio.com is, is, is the one-stop shop. So on there, we've got the site itself, so you can sign up to use it as a subscriber. Uh, but there's also quite a lot of information there for entrepreneurs. There's a blog. Um, we've got uh, very interesting articles. There was an interesting article recently written by a professor, who a guy who was at Duke University, about um, access to capital, African American entrepreneurs. Did a women in venture event recently, so issues that women entrepreneurs are facing. There's an article about that and a, and a video about that. Um, so and we've got an article about uh, how you break through into sort of venture capital circles when you haven't previously had connections there, because so many entrepreneurs don't know where to start. So the blog's got quite a lot of material. And then we've got information about events we do from time to time, which try and support the business, but we invite folks along to so some of BU recently with the students there and with the team there. Will you come back again and talk to us again about how things are going and keep our, our market informed on your services? Because we get obviously a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, we, we do a lot of work in Boston, as I said, and uh, BU is a great partner. I mean, Greg, Professor Greg Storrow over there and his students are fantastic. We've done a couple of projects with them, we're interviewing VCs in the marketplace. I think they've done about 25, 30 interviews in the market. We're partnering with various organizations, the Boston area. I mean, Boston obviously historically has a very strong background in biotech and pharma and financial services. And that's kind of come through the pandemic as well. But we've seen different kind of trends in markets like Boston and different issues about access to capital. So one of the potential partners we're talking to in Boston you know, is it has offices and, and outreach locations outside the city. So in various sort of suburban other locations down towards Providence. So I get out there quite often. Um, so, you know, based on the East Coast, I go back and forth quite a bit. So I'd love to come up and visit folks uh. up there. We're, a, we're big fans of Greg Stoller. He's an original uh, reporter on Radio Entrepreneurs, so we've known him for a very long time. And one of my uh, chapters in my book that just was re-released this week is with someone from London, Richard Cohn, who was also in the entertainment uh, venue okay. business. I don't know if you know who Richard is. He, he was Classical Productions. Okay, that's interesting. Now, I haven't come across him, but I used to be in the rock music industry at one stage, back in the old days. And then uh, sort of went into the classical music industry and, and, and dance and theatre and that kind of stuff. So uh, used to have performances all over the place. In, uh, Richard is uh, Richard's a great guy. And uh, well, it's, it's, uh, people say what's the similarity between venture and entrepreneur, uh, venture and entertainment? But actually, they're remarkably similar. Uh, the venture industry makes money out of commissions. Effectively, they venture firms make money from what's called management fee and carry, which are two commissions they effectively make off managing these businesses they invest into. When I was an agent in the entertainment industry, we took commissions off organizing gigs. We had to go and network to go and meet all the venues, the presenting series, very similar to go and find networks in, in the venture market. So it, it, like in dating, it's like all these kind of, so much of business is so similar to, you know, between personal life and business life. People think they're hugely worlds apart, but actually incredibly similar in many ways. So Simon, uh, before we get off, uh, could you tell people how to find you and contact you if they need you? Yep. So the, be well, the best way is to go to quodio.com. Um, which is qodeo.com, and that's the website. And we've got uh, there's a support email uh, contact there if you want some rate contact with us by email. I'm obviously on LinkedIn, so there's a few Simon Glass around, a few imposters, but I'm I'm the real one. So if you want to look me up with Simon Glass and Quodio, uh, it's now technically a New York address. Uh, if you look me up, uh, we're on social media, on Facebook, we're on uh, um on on uh, twitter etc so uh, by all means follow us you can follow us on linkedin you can follow us on the other social media um but the the website's the main thing quota.com if you can go to that right i remind everybody this is radio entrepreneurs and we'll be back with more stories after this break <laughs> 